Hello, I'm Pastor Stephanie Christoffels, pastor for worship and engagement at Bethlehem Lutheran Church in St. Cloud, Minnesota. And I wanna personally welcome you to this online worship opportunity. Please know that whenever and wherever you are joining us, you are welcome here because we're following the example of Jesus in welcoming everyone for who they are, just as they are. If you're feeling weary, if you're struggling with something in your life, if you feel unheard, or hey, even if everything's going pretty well, we trust that God will meet you in this time of worship. We know that God will work through our song, our prayers, and our message to refresh your soul and prepare you for another week of being the hands, feet, and heart of Jesus for your neighbors. As we prepare for our time of worship together, we are reminded that we are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. months ago, I discovered to my great joy that one of my favorite fan fiction stories was on Spotify, so I could listen to it. It's a three-part series entitled The Rights and Wrongs series, and this particular story is called The Right Thing to Do. Throughout the story, one of the main characters, when asked why she did something, repeatedly would say, because it was the right thing to do. It often involved doing something that was unexpected, showing some sort of kindness or mercy to a person who probably did not deserve it, going against what society thought that she should do. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his donkey or his ox from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said all this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. Our focus text for this week comes after that doozy of a gospel lesson from last week when Jesus said that he did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Here we have Jesus teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. 
Now, a reminder, in Jesus' time, not working on the Sabbath was a big deal, especially when it came to following religious law. As Jesus was teaching, a woman who had been crippled, unable to stand up straight for 18 years, came into the synagogue. Jesus saw her, told her she was set free from her ailment, laid his hands on her, and she was able to stand up straight. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. I imagine that she was so thankful. And Luke even writes that she immediately began to praise God. Now what could be wrong with something like that? Well, the leader of the synagogue took issue with it. In his opinion, she had no business coming in on the Sabbath to be cured. And Jesus had no business healing someone on that day because it was the Sabbath and no work was to be done on the Sabbath. But Jesus was having none of this. He called them out saying that they give their animals water on the Sabbath, so why should he not heal this woman on the Sabbath too? It's so interesting to hear different practices about the Sabbath day. During college, I studied the play Fires in the Mirror, Crown Heights, Brooklyn, and Other Identities by Anna Devere Smith. One of the monologues in this play centered on a Jewish family who on the Sabbath had to have a young boy from their neighborhood come and turn their radio off. The toddler in their family had turned the radio on accidentally on the Sabbath day, but the family was forbidden from using any electronics during the Sabbath, even just pressing a button in order to turn the radio off. For them, in order to keep the Sabbath holy, they enlisted the help of this neighborhood boy. Now for some of us, this might seem a little bit extreme, but for them, this was an important part of their faith practice. Would you consider yourself a rule follower? Generally speaking, I think of myself as a rule follower. I like to know what my left and right limits are. I don't especially enjoy getting into trouble. And I want to know that I'm doing the right thing. Can you relate to that at all? When you're in a situation where maybe you don't know what the rules are, you don't know what you're doing, at least for me, that can be so uncomfortable and anxiety producing. And then if you are in a situation where you or someone you know is going against the ingrained rules of that place, even if the rules seem frivolous or unnecessary, oh my gosh, it can create serious tension. Particularly if you or the person that you're with is considered a rule follower. You want to know the right thing to do. Many times we think of following rules as that right thing to do. So what happens when the right thing to do instead falls outside of those left and right limits and those rules? Now full disclaimer, I am in no way, shape or form encouraging you to go and break a bunch of rules and laws. Children, this is not permission for you to not listen to your parents. And adults, this is not permission to go break laws or do whatever you want, wherever you want, whenever you want. Instead, it's an invitation to think about why we do the things we do. I recall my husband telling me a story about a local small town near where he grew up. Some of the citizens in the town were very proud of the fact that all of their businesses were closed on Sundays. Neighbors would get stern glares if they were caught mowing their lawn on Sunday. And yet, many of those same individuals who were the quote-unquote Sabbath police in town would be spotted shopping or going out to eat on Sunday in a large city about an hour away. Oh, the irony, it makes me smile. I like what the writer of the Working Preacher commentary on this text wrote regarding it. She said, this passage challenges all who have settled into narrow interpretations of scripture or ungenerous theological positions. On so many levels, this resonates with me. We aren't called to be the Sabbath police. It's not up to us to decide who is or is not deserving of healing. It's not up to us to decide who is saved and who is going to hell. It can be so easy to get caught up in following the law and the rules so much 
that we lose sight of what the right thing to do is. And really, what is the right thing to do? It's to love God and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Hey, that's cool. That's biblical. That's what Jesus told us to do. And I can totally get on board with that. The good news of Christ is that God reaches beyond those laws to heal us and to save us. God loves us all. God accepts us all. God meets us all where we are at, even bent and broken on the Sabbath. Now, the story that I mentioned earlier on in the beginning, for the characters in that particular story, the right thing to do was always centered in love. And I think it's the same for us. The right thing to do is to love God, to love our neighbors as ourselves. And for God, the right thing to do was to save us from ourselves through Christ's death on the cross and his resurrection. To heal people on the Sabbath, even if it seemed to break the religious law. When we act out of love for our neighbors and trust in the love that God has for us, then that truly is the right thing to do. Thanks be to God for that. Amen. This next week, I encourage you to take a deeper look by journaling about, meditating on, or talking about these questions by yourself or with another person or a small group. And the first, are you a rule follower, a rule breaker, or do you fall somewhere in the middle? And the second, in any given situation, how do you determine the right thing to do? If today's reflection speaks to you in some way and you feel that it would be well received by others in your life, please feel free to share it. Here at Bethlehem Lutheran Church, we wish to follow Jesus' example of sharing his life-giving message with others, regardless of who they are or where they come from. We thank you for taking the time to watch, listen, and be fed. Continuing to offer our online and our in-person ministries are made possible through your support and your generosity. If you feel that you're in a place to give of your time, your talents, and your treasures, to the mission of Bethlehem Lutheran Church, you can do so in a variety of ways. We have many opportunities to volunteer or participate in the life of the congregation, and you can find those on our website or through subscribing to our weekly e-communication, The Shooting Star. If you're in a place to give of your finances, you can do so through our church website, through mailing a check to the church, or by texting a dollar amount through text to give at 
Any way that you're able to support the mission of the church is so greatly appreciated. Prayer is an important part of our faith journey. If you have a prayer request that you wish to share with our faith community, please leave a comment, send us a message, or contact the church office. Each week, our staff and our congregation pray to those who have been named to us. And now please join me in prayer. Gracious God, help us to know the right thing to do, even and especially when it goes against the rules that may be in place. Help us to be respectful of all. Help us to love others and to love you. And help us to know that you love us even when we are bent and broken, when we're weary, and when we're falling short in our words and deeds. Be with our leaders who are called to lead with compassion, mercy, grace, and wisdom. Help heal divides among us. Bring peace to areas where war is wreaking havoc. Help us to be aware of the struggles our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ have. Be with those who have been marginalized and help us to change our attitudes and our actions for the better. Be with those who mourn, those who have thoughts of suicide, those who are struggling in mind, body, and spirit. Hear the silent prayers of our hearts. We ask all of these things through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As you go back out into the world to be the hands, feet, and heart of God, take this blessing with you. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you in God's grace today and always. Amen. And now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.